run out of formaldehyde. I underestimated you. You almost caught me in flagrante delicto. Now you've seen through my bluff with Nathaniel. Although, you've not divined all, I see. Had you, you would have drawn your silver sword. Who, what are you? A vampire. Higher, of course. Mm-hmm. But I'm pretty good with a sword. Pretty good. My mount cut it. Welcome to a Witcher lore video, guys. So I was thinking about what video to make today, and then I thought it would actually be fun to make a Witcher character's lore video, and then I looked back on a video I made a little while ago now, and that was my video on Oriana, where I discussed if she was a higher vampire or not, and then I thought back to another vampire that also had a lot of questions surrounding them, and I thought that it would make a really good video, and also, I think you guys have suggested this to me quite a lot. So I've decided to make today's video on the coroner. I'm going to address if he's a higher vampire or not, and I'm going to also talk about his story in the games. Hubert Wright or as you may know him, the Coroner, is a higher vampire from the secondary quest Carnal Sins in The Witcher 3. Or is he a higher vampire? This character has caused a lot of confusion in the Witcher community, as in The Witcher 3, he reveals himself as a higher vampire, he even says it to Geralt, but then he takes the form of a Catacan, which, if you follow the book lore, is not a higher vampire. Just to give you a bit of background information from the lore in the Witcher books on higher vampires, higher vampires are supposed to be a completely separate species of vampires, as opposed to say a vampire like an Alp or a Catacan, they're both separate species as well. But in The Witcher 3, both the coroner and Oriana are presented to us as higher vampires, but later appear to be revealed as completely different species of vampires, Oriana being a Bruxa and the coroner being a Catacan. Now there are a few ways we can rationalise the coroner being able to act and seemingly fit into human society and obviously take human form, despite being a Catacan. One reason would be that as vampires get older, they appear, at least in the Witcher games, to get more powerful. So, the coroner may have simply simply been a very old catacan that is able to take on the form of a human. But some of you may also be thinking, wait, in The Witcher 3, the coroner says to Geralt that he is a higher vampire, but he looks like a catacan. And to that, I say that it appears that in The Witcher game lore, catacans, alps, moolahs, Bruxes, Nosferats, and Higher Vampires are all considered as a higher grade of vampires, with Higher Vampires being at the top of that grade. And the reason I say that is that in the world of the Witcher book, which is effectively for game lore, it's not really for the books at all, it pretty much just says that those species of vampires are considered more intelligent and therefore higher than the lower species of vampires. An example of a lower grade vampire would be an Ekimara or a Garkane. But yet again, just to reiterate, that's just in the Witcher game lore, hence the confusion. So the coroner may simply have been stating that he is of a higher grade of vampire, not an actual higher vampire. So a final theory from a law point of view that may be possible surrounding this confusing piece of law is that going back to the point I made earlier, because the coroner may be a very old catacan, in vampire society he may have been just considered as a higher grade of vampire, but not actually a higher vampire. And obviously the final and most likely theory is that CD Projekt Red slightly messed up the law here, and because of this mistake, they have simply changed the in-game law to diverge from the books. Which to me isn't that bad. If this did actually turn out to be a mistake, then I think the way they've handled the law is pretty well, as they have changed it a bit, but honestly at this point, I think it's better that they changed it than kept it as it was, or this entire quest just wouldn't make any sense. So now I hope we've cleared up that point. If you guys have any more interesting theories, or anything that you think is relevant and I haven't already said, then I'd appreciate if you could comment down below, as it'll help everyone with understanding this confusing piece of law. Anyway, now I've cleared up that point, I will tell you this character's full story, what we know about him before and during the games. We don't have that much information surrounding this character's origins, but based on his clearly advanced abilities as a catacan, we can assume that he is very old and may possibly have been among the first vampires that landed in the world from the conjunction of spheres. But we do know that at some point Hubert did fight a witcher and kill him, which I think is actually quite interesting. We also know that before the year 1240, 
1842, Hubert taught medicine at the University of Oxenfurt, and among his students was a man known as Joachim von Gratz, who, as I'm sure you will know, eventually became the chief surgeon at Vilmerius Hospital, in the city of Novograd. In the year 1242, Joachim led a revolt that resulted in the deaths of a lot of people who did not share the protesters' opinion. This caused Hubert to report von Gratz, which led to von Gratz being put in prison. Some of the people who had died in the revolt had supposedly been found in the gutter with their throats slit. After witnessing these events, Hubert moved to the city of Novograd, where he became the coroner of the city's morgue. It was in this city where Hubert used his vampiric powers to murder people who he determined were immoral and in his eyes had gone against the teachings of the eternal fire. So you may find that actually quite interesting because a vampire appears to worship the eternal fire. And the reason why he worships the eternal fire is actually quite simple. He just agrees with the tenets of the religion. And it's quite strange as well because it shows that this vampire did appear to be genuinely concerned about the people of the city. He even handed out pamphlets under the name Concerned Citizen, which warned the city's residents not to commit heresy against the religion. I mean, I know that what he did was horrible and sadistic, but compared to a lot of vampires, I'd say that he seems to have much more of a care for humans than them. Hubert's initial victims mainly consisted of prostitutes who had neither family nor friends, and whose names weren't known. The first named victim we find out about is a woodworker known as Fabian Meyer, who worked with his brother to produce wooden figurines. Hubert went to this woodworker's wood shop and force fed him formaldehyde and then mutilated his body in various ways. He wanted to make the woodworker's suffering not end quickly and even performed a tracheotomy, which is effectively an incision in the windpipe to allow whoever had the incision to breathe. He performed many symbolistic acts on the woodworker that generally symbolised fire, such as removing his heart and placing salamander eggs where it should be, and the symbolism behind that is that the egg of a salamander is born of fire and putting them in the heart is going to replace their cold doubting hearts and he would also gouge out their eyes and replace them with hot coals which is meant to symbolize those that are blind to the fire. To finish off, Hubert left a letter of human skin which always stated his next victim. In this case, it was Priscilla. Hubert managed to attack Priscilla but only got so far in his sadistic ritual, only managing to force feed Priscilla formaldehyde. Attacking Priscilla proved later to be a fatal mistake for this vampire as it got the attention of Geralt of Rivia, who was a good friend of Priscilla's lover, Dandelion. After meeting with Joachim von Gratz, who was now taking care of Priscilla, they went to perform an unauthorised autopsy on the body of the woodworker Fabian Meyer, who was being held in the morgue. However, they were interrupted by the overseer of the morgue, Reverend Nathaniel Pastodi, who is actually the boss of Hubert, and then they were forced to leave. Hubert continued his work throughout the witch's investigation, even when Geralt was hot on his trail. He killed his next victim, Joras Aquinas, who was a lecturer in theology at the Academy in Oxenfurt. Joras was known to openly criticise the Eternal Fire, as were a few other victims, so this gave Geralt a better understanding of what the killer was doing. After this body was taken to the morgue, Hubert invited Geralt to come and perform the autopsy, hoping to trick the Witcher. The Witcher came and discovered a new name written on the body, that name being Patricia Vagelbud. Geralt raced off to the Vagelbud estate, only to find that the killer had got there first. After a brief chase, the killer escaped, and Geralt inspected the body of Patricia. The note on this body read Sweet Nettie, who was a prostitute at Crippled Kate's brothel. Hubert had planted this note as a way to throw Geralt off his scent, as he knew that his boss, Pistodi, went to this brothel to torture Sweet Nettie as a pastime. From here, the quest can go one of two ways. The first way is that Geralt kills Pastodi without finding out that Hubert is the killer. This causes Hubert to kill again and then move on to a smaller settlement. The next way is that Geralt learns Hubert is the real murderer and then travels to the warehouse docks. It is here that Hubert tells Geralt he is a higher vampire then confusingly transforms into a catacan. Geralt then kills the coroner. After finishing telling you that story, I believe it may provide even more evidence as to Hubert not being a true higher vampire, and this is simply due to the fact that Hubert was killed by Geralt, and as we know, a higher vampire can only be killed by another higher vampire. It is possible that Geralt didn't fully kill Hubert, and he is slowly regenerating, but honestly, I doubt that very much. 
Finally, to end today's video, I'm going to read the journal entry on this character. The wave of religious and racially motivated killings that swept through Novigrad in the spring of 1272 coincided with Hubert Reich's term as coroner at the city morgue. Because of this, he was overworked and additionally had to bear the harassment of his dislikable superior, Reverend Nathaniel. It is thus no surprise that he came across as unpleasant and sarcastic when Geralt and he first met. Furthermore, it was clear that there was bad blood between him him and Joachim von Gratz, a fact that did little to improve the already rather stiff atmosphere at the morgue. Nevertheless, having learned the reason of Geralt's unexpected visit, Hubert made it clear that Geralt and Joachim could count on his help. Hubert proposed to help the Witcher perform an autopsy on the killer's latest victim, which revealed valuable new clues. Reich might have succeeded in shifting the blame to another suspect, if not for the Witcher's perspicacity. Geralt had already figured out Reich was the true murderer, and was shocked to learn he was also a powerful vampire. Luckily, Geralt had considerable experience and a honed skill set to draw on for fighting such a creature. He killed the beast and ended his twisted moral crusade. Anyway guys, that's the end of today's video, I hope you've all enjoyed it, this character's really really interesting, I'm honestly glad to make today's video, I feel like it's a fun video to make and it's actually quite an interesting subject, so thank you all for watching today. If you enjoyed today's video and you want to see more videos like this, and if you just want to support the channel, I'd really appreciate you liking the video, it seriously helps me out and it's very very kind of you to do, so thank you to every single one of you that clicks the like button. Also of course, if this is the first video you're finding on my channel, be sure to subscribe, I do Witcher Netflix news whenever anything interesting happens. Obviously, I do Witcher lore videos every few days. I plan to do some Elder Scrolls lore soon. I plan to get back to the Oblivion playthrough soon. And of course, I have the Witcher playthrough that I'm currently doing. So if you don't want to miss any of those videos, be sure to subscribe to me, as then you'll get the videos in your subscription box. Also, of course, be sure to follow me on Twitch. I haven't been able to follow the schedule so much recently, as I've been very, very busy with other things than YouTube, but I hope to get back to it soon. So if you want to make sure you don't miss any of those streams, I'd recommend going and following me on there. And also, be sure to follow me on Twitter. I put updates on there whenever I post a new video, whenever anything interesting is happening, whenever there's any news to do with Netflix, or if I just want to show you a cool picture that I've taken to do with The Witcher, or something else that's probably related to the channel or me, be sure to go and follow me on there if you don't want to miss any of that. And finally, as always, a big thank you to the Patreon pledges. You guys are honestly amazing. You seriously help out the channel so much, and it's very, very kind what you do. It honestly really does help me out. I use the money to pay for my editing software and a few other things, so it really is helpful. So thank you to every single one of these names. I'm glad to put every single one of you at the end of my videos. Anyway guys, I hope you've all enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Have an awesome rest of the week.